Hey guys, my name is Natalina and in today's video we're gonna be doing full face of first impressions. I had a bunch of new cosmetics right in here. So to begin with, we're gonna be starting with the CC Red Correct from Herborean. I'm not into like color correction and stuff and I'll explain later why, but I'm a fan of this CC from Airport. We're gonna be testing out the new Kiviti Beauty Good Apple Foundation. And I see the tendency with the brands that they name all of their stuff just the same because this one is called Good Apple Foundation. But Kiviti Beauty has another Good Apple Foundation, like the cream version, which went viral a couple of years ago or maybe last year. I, I don't even remember when, why, and what happened. So we're gonna be trying that out. I have no idea what coverage it has. So, but this is not a good start. Uh, this is in the shade light 021 and obviously it's too yellow, too light for me, but it, it's like, I'm not sure about my skin color. Of course I'm sure. I just like my skin to be tan, but I'm not mentally prepared for this weekly routine of putting on self tanners. So, so because of that, my shoulders are so wide and I already put some foundation here. So, and other interesting thing is that American brands tend to make their foundations either very, very yellowish, like mustard mixed with milk type of colors or very, very pink like strawberry mixed with milk. Uh, sounds tasty, but in reality it's not. So I will mix it with some kind of a liquid bronzer. Then I have here two palettes from Huda Beauty from the collection like Mad Obsessions, I think it's called. This one is called Cool Mad Obsessions. It has some pink colors, some beige colors, and Huda Beauty always puts some of warmer colors, even though this palette is called cool mats, but it's not fully cool. And other palette, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be using that today. Very warm, very orangey. A new powder by Beauty Blender. I was not aware that Beauty Blender has its own beauty line. Of course, I'm aware of Beauty Blender and I was a huge fan of like original Beauty Blender for the longest time, but then when was the first foundation by Beauty Blender launched, first launched? Uh, maybe like four or five years ago. Uh, I'm lost in time and it's just a normal situation for me, but they have like a full on makeup line and I was able to get my hands only on the powder. And that's because I live in Turkey and they don't have this cosmetics line in here. And I asked a friend of my husband who was in Dubai in United Arab Emirates to go to Sephora there and to buy me a lot of stuff, but only this powder was presented by the brand at an actual shop, but you can buy those things online. And then he brought it here to Turkey. So then I have a bunch of Charlotte Tilbury cream products. I have two shades of her recent launch. It's the blush. It's called Matte Beauty Blush One. The good thing about that, that is matte, but, but we'll see. I have the shades Dream Pop and Pink Pop, and of course, what are they called? Of course, Pillow Talk. Everything by Charlotte Tilbury is nowadays called Pillow Talks. Different palettes, different blushes, lipsticks, like everything. I understand it's her thing, it's her trademark, but okay. Then we have these bronzers, not bronzers, like contour shades, and I used to have one of that. I believe it was in the shade Fair Medium. Here I have Medium Deep and Fair Medium as well. And I wasn't that impressed with this product just because it wasn't like a right thing for me. But during last year, Charlotte Tilbury just went viral on TikTok. Everyone uses these products. I'm just not sure about, about the packaging. I just, I'm not loving it. Like, for real, I just, I don't know. And it has this gel texture, but I'll try to revive my memory and maybe, maybe I'll like it more now. But usually I do prefer uh, when we're talking about like cream contouring, some products with really soft, creamy, waxy texture. So one of my favorite textures is Huda Tantor because it's so soft, it blends nicely. Also I have here, cream highlighter from Charlotte Tilbury. 
it's cold of course of course pillow sock so we'll try that but i'm not a fan of cream highlighters of any brands then i have lip balm by makeup by mario it's called mauve glow and it's plumbing lip serum interesting oh concealer concealer by rare beauty and can you guess the shade name it the shade name is light medium it irritates me how different brands see different colors because this one is light medium by rare beauty and this one is light medium by tarte this one is more light medium than this one this is like real light fair light okay we'll try that one and i also have creamy call by huda beauty it's like an, an eyeliner but this is like a pointy eyeliner but it doesn't have any sharpeners in here because usually this type of pencils do have like smaller sharpeners thing in here in the in their small butts for example here i do have a similar pencil from top face it's a turkish brand and here I mean here i have a little sharpener and i do have two lip pencils by rare beauty the shades are the shades the shades the shades are fun and lovely and these are the only two colors that they have here in turkish sephora in antalya maybe in istanbul uh they have more shades i have no idea then a matte lipstick by gucci in the shade gray cinnamon and of course l'oreal telescopic lift i tried that several times and i do already have my own opinions on that product so let's start with the makeup okay let's talk color correction i do love color correction but in some ways i love color correction for under eyes but i don't love green correctors green creams and people usually don't apply them correctly they they tend to buy wrong colors because all of the nuances like imperfections like pimples and all of that stuff usually tends to have cooler undertones like violet magenta undertones and to color correct you need to use a cream which has the same depth of the color so it's not lighter or darker and has opposite temperature so to color correct red tones in your skin violet tones under your eyes you need really warm color correctors not grass green but more of olive green colors and usually these types of correctors which are not meant to be used by professionals professionals in color correcting they're too white they're pastel colors it's nearly white and it's more white <laughs> than green kind of mixes together with the pigment added to this cc cream if you use their normal cc cream it has little ampules with pigment inside of them and when you just start applying it it just turns into this beige color usually these types of green characters just turn your face into a very lighter and just a more grayish greenish face you just need your color character to be of the same color depth meaning that for example let's take my uh, permanent makeup so here we have a really dark blue color the opposite color to the blue one is the orange one and to correct this dark blue shade you just need a really dark orangey color which is brown because brown is a version of like dark orange color it should be like brown with warm undertones and then this blue thing will turn into not my skin shade no it's not, just not possible it will turn into neutral brown so the main goal of color correction is to turn the color of your problem into your skin color or into a very neutral color why did this video turn into a video about color correction but yeah of course it's a theme for another video but and i see a lot of people online putting bright orange characters onto their under eyes having the same skin shade as me and it's just frustrating because it doesn't correct anything it just leaves you with bright orange under eyes and you just have to put tons of foundation and concealer just to conceal that it's it's not how it works color correctors are meant to blend in your skin seamlessly but let's try this and cc creams are intended to be applied with your hands and i just wanted to use that one as like primer not not as a main foundation because we have this puppy right here 
And what did this CC cream do? Of course, it turned down my redness. Any CC or a BB cream or lighter foundation or tint and moisturizer will. The color of my redness wasn't that bright. Of course, my skin looks better that way. And I like that this product isn't like straight up green. It's mixed with some beige and it creates just slightly cooler and slightly lighter undertone. So this product is all right, but I'm thrilled to try the foundation. Let's read about this foundation. So it says it's full coverage, serum foundation, serum foundation, full coverage. Serum foundations tend to be more of a thinner foundation. So it says shake well, recyclable bottle and cap. Let's just look at that. Oh, it's so, it's like really yellow. Maybe, no, of course I'll add a bit of Look at bronzer. I just wanted to try it on on its own. It's a bit too yellow. I wanted to mention that this one has a pretty natural finish, so it's not glowy. Okay, let's mix it with my trusted NARS Laguna liquid bronzer. It's still a bit yellow because bronzer just makes it a bit darker and a bit more peachy. But I'll go with that doesn't say anywhere on the packaging what finish it has. It says only that it's lightweight, all day wear, transfer resistant, queen sleeve extract to help mattify. So it might be more of a matte foundation. It's really pigmented and it looks bad. <laughs> I'm aware of that. In terms of the texture, it looks nice. It's, I would say, full coverage, medium to full coverage. It's pretty light. It doesn't feel heavy but the color just looks unhealthy on me but i don't want that to set entirely because if it's a matte foundation it will create many problems for me using this contours bronzers if you want to use cream contour i would suggest using foundations with really natural finish setting finish because matte foundations they set and when you're applying cream product i'm talking about cream products similar to this so those products that have really waxy texture and this texture can just dissolve matte foundations. These products are gel based, I think, and they're not that oily, but okay, let's try those. Here I have the shade medium deep. I, I, just, I just don't know how, to, what, <laughs> I don't know how to feel anymore about this one. Just, I don't think it's like great. I don't like the idea of having the cream product sitting just here. It's not hygienic. You're a working makeup artist, you'll just have to use it with your palette because, because it's not hygienic to use it straight out of the tube. Okay, let's try that. I just need to push a bit. Here's the shade medium deep and here is the shade fair medium. Now that I'm looking like a leopard, let's blend it out just I'm mixing two colors. I'm just not sure about the product. I don't understand where does the redness come from because the foundation was pretty opaque and maybe, yeah, yeah, now I can see that. Can you see that the product just melted through my, my foundation and when I'm Blending it out. Can you see the patches on my face? Maybe when used with more of a moisturizing foundations, they're fine. But now I'm just taking the foundation off my face. And I'll have to put more foundation there. Let's try with a brush, not with the sponge. It definitely looks better when applied. Can you see here? So I'll apply a bit of a product to my palette. A bit of a product is not possible. Uh, oh God, it just, just doesn't stop. It, it, it's so messy. And to my brush, we'll work it in. And we'll try that way. I'm not loving this product with this particular foundation and this shade is called medium deep and the shade is called medium deep but it's not like oh god can you see it has 
something in it and it just takes my foundation off. Now for the concealer. It has metal applicator. I just I just can't with these brands. Maybe maybe they just wanted to create a multifunctional tool um, for depuffing your eyes and for color correcting your dark circles. Personally, I think that we should leave those types of applicators to the skincare. It just doesn't make sense because if you want to depuff your eyes, you'll need to apply something cold for a couple of minutes and you won't be rubbing your under eyes with concealer for a couple of minutes. It's just, it just doesn't make sense. But it's a really nice and light product. My first impression is that it would be great for those with very dry under eyes. This foundation and bronzer did me dirty. And I mean it literally. Now for the blush. Same beloved packaging. Pink Pop. There's the shade Pink Pop. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that color on me. But it turns out it looks quite good. I don't understand how to do this product. Uh, of course I understand. Be and because of that, I love cream products more, like wax-based cream products, because these gel textures are just not my favorite. And they dry out. Can you see that? So don't leave them for long there. Maybe it's the key uh, to the master's application. Now for the highlighter. Hello, it's me. And shade is called, you name it. Of course, of course, it's Pillow Talk. I am not mad at it. Come on, let's put some powder. So it's in the shade buff. It's not a freaking powder. It's, it's a highlighter. Soft focus gemstone setting powder. What? What were they thinking? Oh god. First of all, it's just popped out of its packaging and soft, soft focus is straight up highlighter. Beauty blender. This is the reason why no one talks about your beauty line. Okay. I'll try that. Maybe I'm the crazy person here. No, I'm not the cr I'm afraid of putting that on. Yeah. I am speechless. I am speechless. I just put highlighter. Of course, you can use that as soft focus powder like those hourglass ones those powders shouldn't be used on the center part of your face because it accentuates all the pores all of the texture but okay understand this movement that oh yeah pores are nature of course they are of course lines pores but i don't like to accentuate this part of uh, the face and it's accentuated because of the lights that I have in here. And can you see when I just do apply regular foundation, they're gone. And I just prefer this look to this look. I think this powder has this, it's right to exist, but I would advise to put it all over your body, for example, for a nice shine. I've used Bravis by Anastasia Beverly Hills in the shade Taupe and some of the Charlotte Silbury brow gel. And now, and now for the eyes. We're gonna be using this palette right here, Cool Matte Obsessions, because I just feel more like it. I just wanted to touch these two shades really bad. And those are creamy ones. They remind me of creamy texture in Natasha Denona's palettes. And, but let's see, let's see what Huda Beauty is up to because she's quite creative with her palettes and with newer texture in the palettes. 
I'm starting with the shade right here. It's a creamy shade and I'm applying it with a fluffy synthetic brush all over the lid and I'm blending it out towards the temples. Now I'm going into the darkest shade in the palette and I'm applying it to my outer V. I'm picking the color on and then I'm dragging out a wing. I'm blending out the upper part of the wing and I reapply the darkest shade from my outer V to be darker and more even. Then I go in this shade and I blend out my crease in the outer V. Then I'm going in the lighter shade and I apply it to the lid with a flat but soft brush with natural bristles. With the lightest shades, I'm highlighting my inner corner and I add some of the brown pencil between the lashes and to the upper waterline. I'm applying Telescopic Lift Mascara by L'Oreal to my upper and bottom lashes. And unfortunately, it doesn't do a lot for me. Okay, here's the finished look. And I wanted to show this eye right here. I just did this eye off camera and it took me like 15 minutes to get the second eye done. And by the time I was finished, this happened. It's not my first time wearing this mascara and the same thing happened to me when it was just my very first time trying it. It isn't a bad mascara. It gives you volume, it gives you length, but I cannot get over the fact that it just bleeds sometimes. I would recommend avoiding moisturizing foundations or stuff like that. Those with natural finish, those foundations with natural finish, BBCC creams also with natural finish, otherwise your mascara will just bleed. My under eyes were quite dry, meaning that I powdered them just before applying the mascara. Moving forward to the lips, I have two lip pencils from Rare Beauty. Those are automatic pencils. And yeah, I was going to sharpen <laughs> one of those, but... Then I got a flashback from my Huda Beauty video and yeah, those are automatic too. And this one, the peachy one, the shade is called Lively. And this one, the darker one, is called Fun. And the matte lipstick from Gucci in the shade Cinnamon something. Uh, gray Cinnamon. I think I'll go for darker color. Actually, these pencils, they do have little sharpeners in their butts. This pencil isn't stiff, but it's not that creamy either. They're not dry, they're not too creamy. You can just wear them on their own, or you can put any lip balm. And now for the lipstick. I'm not sure about the texture of the lipstick. I don't enjoy wearing matte lipsticks. They're just too dry for my liking. Usually I apply either chapstick, either lip gloss over my matte lipsticks and yeah, and that's it for me. But there is nothing special about it. It's Gucci and at price point, I'd expect something mind-blowing. But actually, Gucci Beauty is nice. I just do love their primer and their lip balm, but other than that, their cosmetics have been really regular. Sorry, Gucci. But I have something new from Gucci Beauty to try it in further videos. So let's discuss everything that we tried today. Okay, I'm ready to share my opinion with you. So where do we start? Uh, first of all, I wanted to mention that I look paler than I do normally. And I do enjoy this look, which is not very typical for me. Okay, let's start with this CC cream from Herborean. I do love this brand. They have so many amazing products, but this one was a bit lackluster for me. I just prefer like their usual CC cream. It's for those whose skin looks like mine, who has a bit of rosacea, a bit of like redness in their face. This won't do much. You can just cover everything with the lightest tinted moisturizer and adding a concealer to certain areas. And you don't need to put like this greenish undertone all over your face. You just really don't need this. This might work for those who were sunburned. When your whole face is is just straight up red. Then for the foundation, it broke because I had dropped it. So yeah, unfortunately it doesn't close anymore. There's something that I don't like about this foundation. Of course the color was off. I, I have eyes, I can see that. And even my trusted bronzer couldn't fix it, which is heartbreaking because it usually helps. And this was not the case. And I don't like the way it sits on my face. It just accentuates some pores. It doesn't sink into the pores. It feels like that 
good Apple foundation, but in a lighter version, because that good Apple foundation, it went viral all over TikTok, but that foundation sucked really hard because cream foundations that come in a pan, they usually don't set. They're great for televisions, for HD cameras, but they look like shit in real life. And this foundation looks like shit in real life too. So I have no idea if it looks good on camera or not, but I don't feel confident going out like that. I do use full coverage foundation, not on a daily basis, but when I do it in events or like I have some performance or when I have some performances like giving master classes. And the only foundation which I use for that purpose is Estee Lauder Double Wear. Many people ruined its reputation just because they put too much. And watching constantly TikToks and Instagram, you just can get overwhelmed and because of social media, people tend to apply a lot of foundation, but you really don't need that. Because pigment and foundation, it doesn't mean that you need to put a lot to see all the pigment. To see all the pigments, you just need to apply it in a thin layer. And when there is written that this is a pigmented foundation, like full coverage foundation, it doesn't mean that you need to apply much. No, absolutely not. So when we're thinking about a foundation, let's say one kilogram or one liter, of foundation and you have the base the cream base and you have some amount of pigment so they will put like this much of the pigment to tinted moisturizer and they will put like this of a pigment to one liter of full coverage foundation so you see what i mean you, you don't need to apply full coverage foundations in huge quantities no they're not intended for that you can apply those in very thin layers so my point is that i don't like this foundation and there are very few foundations that i really like and that i use in my work on the regular basis i'm sorry for my pale shoulders but i don't have energy to put some foundation there so and I'm just a mess in this video. And it usually happens when I'm not happy with my base, like with my foundation. So, Charlotte Tilbury. I have so many favorites in Charlotte Tilbury. These products are not it. I can see myself using those while working on other people, especially the highlighter. I'll give it another try, of course I will, because it, it costs like a fortune, but I think the most important thing is that you should use it with foundations with more of a natural finish and not matte ones. I didn't like that foundation, but I'm looking forward to trying those with my regular foundations and we'll see, we'll see. And I'm planning on filming a Charlotte Tilbury review with her newer products, with older products, with my favorite products that I've been buying for the last five or six years constantly. And yeah, she has so many good products. I love Charlotte Tilbury, but these products, they just didn't do much for me. And Rare Beauty, what a negative review. I wasn't expecting that. I just... <sighs> I have so many questions towards Rare Beauty. Selena Gomez has the best reputation. Everybody loves her and great. I understand that. But there are so many controversial products. The foundation, the original foundation by Rare Beauty, I tried it multiple times and it felt like oil mixed in with the foundation. It looked horrible on the skin and it does. And whenever I see a human being like a real like a real person in real life applying that to the skin is just it's bad it looks bad the product itself isn't bad it's like a nice concealer to brighten a bit your under eyes but not like here like just for the blue parts of your eyes i don't see any point in using like a metal tip like what even is this material i just don't know yeah it feels nice but to depuff your eyes, you'll need to use it for other like two or three minutes. Feels wrong to rub your eyes uh, with concealer for the next couple of minutes. I just, I don't know. And I didn't see that in the picture of the concealer, maybe because I wasn't looking and I just saw a new product from Rare Beauty. The lip pencils from Rare Beauty were great. This is not my typical choice of a color. I prefer more of a brownie, more of a nude, like beige nude 
colors but the texture was good i love the fact that those are automatic pencils and i love the sharpener so yeah this product was good Beauty beauty creamy call uh, how do you pronounce this word in english i'm not i'm not quite sure okay uh, this product i didn't get a lot of use out of it today i only applied it to my lash line and i'll try it in other videos but it felt very pigmented and it wasn't stiff neither was it really creamy it was a perfect combination so it's quite okay but these are just my first impressions this mascara i yeah tiktok <laughs> isn't a very good place <laughs> sometimes but i have some kind of love-hate relationship with tiktok uh so yeah this mascara went viral it was a moment in beauty history but um the mascara itself l'oreal has good mascaras their telescopic mascara like the classic one is great like really great lengthening mascara this mascara gives you volume it gives you length but it also gives you panda eyes or akuni eyes or yeah you've seen it what it gives you and it's very unfortunate it's not for those who have longer uh, bottom lashes it's not for those with oily skin it's not for those who prefer to wear sunscreen tinted moisturizer so anything really creamy under the eyes on, on their face so i feel like this mascara is targeted towards not a very large audience but maybe it's just no it's, it's not just me because i've tried it multiple times and every single time it did absolutely the same thing it was constantly bleeding but the interesting thing is that it doesn't bleed upwards only here i i don't know why maybe it's just really loves raccoons then the lipstick i don't like matte lipsticks i must admit and this one wasn't an exception and it feels dry my lips they do look dry it wasn't pigmented it settled in some of my lines it doesn't look great neither does it feel good so yeah but the gucci lip balm especially the clear one chef's kiss i just love that stuff and the palette from huda beauty i was so pleasantly surprised by that one i love huda beauty and some of her products i just swear by them i just feel like i need to explain myself because this is a new channel but i've had some history with huda beauty with all of these brands actually usually her eyeshadows are not that pigmented they're more of a chucky texture it doesn't mean that they're bad it just means that they're not like crazy pigmented and they're very good for everyday makeup and every makeup you see online with professional lights looks darker in real life this makeup is on a darker side i would say this feels like completely different formula i must admit i'm not a fan of this eyeshadows because any products coming in this type of packaging they just cannot set so it feels like you know like a concealer mixed with pigment and it blends really nicely my opinion is better to apply this types of formula to the parts of your eye which do not move like this orbital area and to the lid you can just apply like the normal pressed eyeshadows i'll wear this eyeshadows i will update you now <laughs> to the powder slash highlighter beauty blender what have you done what i have so many questions this powder it just it just doesn't feel right because it's it's a highlighter it it's it's not a powder like not at all the amount of shiny particles in it it just feels wrong to me now i am pale and shiny and everything comes together maybe as a body highlighter but why would you buy a powder and use that as a body i, I just beauty blender <laughs> i'm curious about other products i wonder if there is something weird about them too i just don't know what to feel anymore <laughs> because it feels like a betrayal and i used to be the biggest fan of beauty blender of the original beauty blender and i was the biggest advocate for the original beauty blender but 
those days are in the past. So beauty blender do better. So guys, with full face of first impressions, you never know. It might be great, it might be horrible. Today, it was something in between. And usually when I don't like my foundation, I just tend to get grumpy, and I did. It's not my last time trying these products and maybe I'll find the way to make them work. We'll see about that. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.